Good morning. 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 How's everybody this morning? Miss Sue caught me out in the audience. I was out shaking hands. I love to shake hands and, and, and meet people and say good morning. Welcome to Salute Baptist Church. So good to see each and every one of you this morning. I'm Pastor Jeff. And, and you know what? I, I, I'm just amazed at all the good things happening to Saluda and Saluda Baptist Church. We've got some young kids that are playing some amazing ball. Anybody been keeping up with baseball? Softball? Yeah, maybe a little bit. They've been doing some amazing things this week, but uh, we've also had a busy, busy week here at the church. We had a group of youth that went up to Look Up Lodge. I got to spend a couple days with them, Pastor Brandon and Paul and Jonathan and Taylor and, and several others were with them. I don't know how they kept up with them. They had a busy, busy time. It was a wonderful camp for them. Um, a wonderful outcome, if you will. We also had a float trip yesterday, um, and I, I got to tell you a few highlights. Mary's cringing at some of the highlights, I can already tell. I'm going to show you a video first. We put together, uh, we, Miss Billy, up until about midnight last night, put together a, a short video. Let me show it to you. Uh, Miss Billy, would you cue it up? time they some people would call it kayaking but if you look at what we did I think it was more like bumper boats uh, as we went down the water and there's one moment I, I just have to share it I, I'm not gonna take long but um, you know we had an old Navy sea dog with us that is an expert in the water I'm not gonna call him by name and uh, we're going down the river and they said oh look at Jim well I'm, I'm this way right and so I try to turn now we're not experts in the water whatsoever when I did this, I end up in a 360 spin. I can't stop at this point. But when I turn, I see Jim perched up on a rock probably three feet above the water. I don't know how he got up there, but he's just sitting proud. But then right behind that, I do another spin. He's gone, and Matt Gentry is up there with his paddle, standing proudly on the rock like he had just kicked uh, Jim off. I don't know what happened, um, but that was kind of a summation of our day. We had a great time, a lot of laughter, a lot of good times, fellowship. We enjoyed fellowship with one another. We've got a lot of things still coming up in our church that you need to be aware of. Some are in your bulletin. We've got a senior adults dinner coming up. We've also got a ladies activity coming up. Um, I do want to make mention here something very important. We've got our deacon election coming up, voting for that. Please take a look at this and be in prayer over this list. Uh, the election will start next week, uh, and so I'd like you to take a look at that, be in prayer, and, and, and really see where the Lord is leading you. Are you ready to worship? Yeah. That was a pretty... I heard more enthusiasm on the river yesterday, Bill. Ask again? You weren't there. Are you ready to worship? Yeah. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you. Father, I praise you for all that you've done. You're so good to us each and every day. 
blessing us abundantly beyond what we ever could have imagined in our lives. And we just thank you for that. Father, we gather in your house this morning to praise you for all that you've done, to learn more about you, to dig deeper into your words, Father. And I just pray that you would uh, just permeate this building, permeate each and every heart and soul that's here. Allow your words to speak to our hearts that we can carry them out into this world. Father, just bless this, this church. Bless everything that we're doing here. And Father, we want to bless you. We want to glorify you in all that we do. Father, we love you so much, and we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you please stand? You'll note that they didn't have any accidents yesterday, no injuries, because I wasn't there. Yes. We have a mighty God, a mighty God. He can save anyone. And then we'll go to another song that, that explains everything. He hides our soul. Isaiah 51, 16. Yes, he says, I have... Your soul covered with my the shadow of my hand. Let's pray.
morning. Good morning. Good morning. Just glad to be in the house of the Lord for sure, especially after yesterday. <laughs> so, but uh, we had a great time, that's for sure. Uh, let's see. Scripture reading is 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is sacred, and you together are that temple. Let's remember that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful to be able to be here today, Lord, to, you, to hear more of your word and learn more about your life and everything that you do and everything that you've done for us, Lord. And Heavenly Father, we just give you all the praise and all the glory. And Heavenly Father, we just lift up these tithes and offerings today that we will be able to use this to your divine Scripture in your in your love, Lord, and this we ask in your precious name, Amen. <laughs>
or children's corner. Sorry if I'm <clears throat> if I sound a little weird, but uh, I'm a little congested, and I guess being outside for a couple weeks in a row will do that to you. But um, this morning I'm going to do something a little different. I'm not going to ask all of our children to come up, but I'm just going to pick on some of you from where you're at, if that's okay. Um, so I want to show some pictures. So Miss Billy's going to put a picture up here. So Ford Charlie, what is that? What would you call that? Maybe a swamp. So it's, it's a pond. It's supposed to be a pond, but would you want to drink water from that pond? Why not? Because it's dirty, well, I guess. But it's water, right? I mean, it's water, so it's supposed to be good to drink, right? Well, why, does, why do you think a pond has water you wouldn't want to drink? It just sits there. Have you ever seen a pond? It just sits there. It doesn't really go anywhere. It's just kind of there. It's water, but it's not really good water. All right, so Miss Billy has another picture she's going to put up. So, let's see, Cassidy, what is this? So, yeah, it's like a waterfall. It's, it's a part of a stream. All right, would you drink water from that? Why? So, it's running water, right? So, it, it looks clean, it looks good, and it's moving, like it's running. So, I learned from our survival expert, Noah Hendricks, on, at Lookup, that running water is good. Um, I'm convinced that if anything were to happen at Lookup and we ran out of food, that, that boy was prepared. I mean, he had everything with him. But running water is good. Now, we go back to the pond. It was still water, but it was just kind of sitting there, right? It wasn't really doing anything. But this, this water is going somewhere. It has a purpose. And you know, sometimes, as Christians, we can be the same way. We can come to church and we can just kind of sit there. We may think that we're worshiping. I mean, we may think that we're following God. And we may be water. We may be Christians. We may have Jesus living inside of us, but we're kind of like that pond. We're just kind of sitting there. When Jesus wants us to be like this stream, he wants our worship to be like a stream that is, has a purpose behind us, not just sitting there stagnant, not doing anything. And so what I want us to think about is when we come to church or when we go to worship, are we like pond water that's just sitting there or are we like this stream? Do we have a purpose behind what we're doing? Let me pray for us. Dear God, thank you so much for this day. And God, I pray that you will help all of us uh, as we enter in this time of worship through uh, reading your word, God, that we would not just be like the, the pond water just sitting there, but that we would be like the stream. God, that we would want to worship you with a purpose in all that we do. And we ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good word, Pastor Brandon. He always does a great job tying in the children's corner, the family corner, with the, the message for the day. I appreciate that so much. I, I do want to make mention of a couple folks. Um, just from a prayer request standpoint, you may or may not be aware of uh, Jamie, James Rush, still in the hospital, Mary. Uh, still in the hospital, dealing with some, some issues there. Please be in prayer for him. Um, and also, Miss, uh, Miss Mary Beasley uh, heard this morning that she suffered a fall, uh, and uh, she's okay, just very sore. There you are. Uh, just very sore and, and whatnot. But please keep her lifted in your prayers uh, uh, each and every day of this week. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I just thank you. I praise you. Uh, Father, I glorify you. Father, you, you, your words, as we're about to hear, uh, are just sweet to our ears as we hear from you personally. This, this book, this Bible, Father, we call it the Bible. It's God's word to us, your word to us, to allow us to grow closer to you, to, for you to reveal yourself to us, uh, words that we should learn from, words that we should apply in our lives, words that we should take with us each and every day. And, and this morning, Father, as we... Uh, study your words. I just pray that you would uh, bless our hearts with meaning, bless our hearts with uh, application, bless our hearts with action. Allow us to be actionable as we go out into this world, Father. And this is one of those passages that speaks so loudly. And, and Father, I just pray that you be with each and every heart that's here. I pray for those online. I know we have a good number this morning that are online watching and, and, and listening. And I, I thank you for those. I thank you for their commitment, uh, Father, as they're traveling as they're on vacation, still to, to tune in and, and to listen to what your words 
uh, have to say. Father, I just pray that you would bless us, keep us, direct us, uh, Father, and, and that we would glorify you. These things I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, yesterday you did see uh, several of us men ventured out onto the river for, I'm going to call it a float trip. It was, I'm going to call us a, a motley crew. We had a couple of young men that were not so motley, but there were several of us that, uh, uh, you know, were there just to have a good time. We traveled from Saluda, South Carolina to Saluda, North Carolina. I think that's a man thing. We had to stay in the same town, even though it was a different, uh, same name of town, even though it was a different state. Uh, and as you can see, we weren't experts on the water, but we got home. We survived. I don't think there was any injuries, uh, and maybe some pride that was hurt uh, along the way. Uh, what I forgot to tell you was the instruction that we got was to, uh, and it was really key to that story, to stay away from the box, which some of us didn't, uh, to, uh, to try to always go forward down the water, which some of us didn't. Uh, but the most important rule, which Matt Gentry did follow, was keep a hold of your paddle. I don't know how he left his boat and still had his paddle, but he was standing proudly on that rock yesterday. Uh, he was the man. He was the man. We, we drove about two hours. We were on the water for about three, and then we had a nice dinner last night. It came home, uh, got home past my bedtime. Uh, we were here about 930, but you know what? It was still a great time, wonderful time of fellowship with some men. And I enjoy that. The, the river is so meaningful to me, any river. Uh, as many of you know, I grew up, uh, I claim as my hometown, Mammoth Spring, Arkansas. Mammoth Spring, Arkansas is not a great big town that a lot of people know of. Uh, in, in fact, some would say it's not that impressive, but I do. It's, it's my roots. It's where my granny and granddad uh, raised their family. My mom and my aunt and my uncles uh, all grew up in Mammoth Spring, in Mammoth Spring, they have uh, the, one of the world's largest springs that uh, brings forth 9 million gallons of water an hour. Uh, it's, a, it's a very, you know, vast spring, and there's a dam at the top, and, and they have a lake, and below the dam, it starts the Spring River, and on that Spring River, I spent many an hour as a, as a youth uh, with my granddad fishing, also fishing by myself. I also floated that river, swam in that river, even though it is a balmy 58 degrees year-round. You don't do much swimming. You do a lot of jumping in and jumping out. But it's in that river and in that town that I go uh, to find uh, my roots. I let go and I relax when I find myself there. Uh, I go down memory lane and I remember the things that are vitally important to me in my life, and, and that's primarily family uh, and, and also God, and, and, and everything just kind of settles to the side. The river, the river is so important. The river has so many meanings to me. The river has many lessons that it can share. And yesterday, for a short period of time, even in the midst of my twirling around, I was able to find peace in that river. I, I'd asked the guys yesterday, and it was a, a, maybe an odd request. Uh, you know, as, as we get ready to go, we had a little time of devotion uh, before we, we went down the river, and I said, you know what, guys, uh, I ask a favor. And this may sound like an odd uh, favor, but uh, I want you to uh, allow me to take off my pastor hat and just be Jeff. I, I need to find myself in this river, and, and, I, and I did, and, and they, they did. Uh, we, we had just a great time doing that. You know, about a week prior, so a couple weeks out, I'd sent a card out to everybody because uh, I'm a planner, I've talked about that. I've got folders that have folders in them, and I like to plan. And I'd sent out a note uh, trying to talk about the things that are important for us to take. Uh, talked about the itinerary uh, of the day. Basically, what were the plans for the day? And, and at the bottom of that, I put a scripture on there, Amos 5:24. Let let justice run like run down like water, and righteousness like a mighty stream. I put that there, namely because the scripture spoke of water, uh, and we were getting ready to go on this journey, it, and I really thought that that's where I would leave that passage, uh, and this week I started prepping my sermon, uh, I've, I've said it many times, I go where the Lord leads me when I preach, I, I very seldom will ever do a series uh, of sermons, but usually I just go where the Lord leads me, and this week I, I thought I was on the right path, uh, studying a different book of the Bible, preparing a different message for today. And, and the Lord redirected me uh, back to Amos. I could not get this passage off of my mind because stand alone, it, it's, it's a little odd. 
And so I started digging into it, and the Lord has placed me in the book of Amos this morning. If you want to go ahead and turn there in your Bibles, and this is the part of the of church that I love when I hear the pages turning in the Bibles. Uh, and if you're not sure where to find it, go, go to Psalm, go to Proverbs, and hang a right. Uh, about ten books over, you'll find uh, the, the book of, of uh, Amos. Amos was written about 755, 760 B.C., by a prophet from the southern kingdom, uh, God had called this shepherd, this farmer, this quiet man to go north and preach to the Israelites in the northern kingdom. And the, the people in the northern kingdom somewhat dismissed him because he was a foreigner. He came from the south. He wasn't one of them. And, and you know, they, they were very proud people. He was preaching judgment to them at the time. And they weren't listening too strongly because at that time, Israel was very prosperous. Uh, one of the most notable times in, in their history, they were very prosperous, uh, and they were very religious in all that they did. They, they had their festivals, they had their, their times of worship and sacrifice, but they were missing the mark. And, and today we're going to hear about that. They're going to missing that mark because they were missing opportunities to uh, show justice and show love and show mercy to their fellow man. They, they spent times just worshiping. And in fact, they said that they didn't like taking care of their fellow man. They, they hated some of that. And so God hated, we see God will, hates their worship, right? And, and it's interesting as, as we think about the times that we live in, we could find some similarities here, and, and that's what we're going to be looking at this morning is the similarities. You know, we can also see today that injustice perhaps permeates our society. We, we put in front of that more important things like preaching, teaching, and praying. Awkward pause there, right, because there's a little sarcasm in that statement. The more important things like preaching, teaching, and and, and praying, and yes, they are important, but it's not the only thing that God asks us to do in our lives. We are to be witnesses out into this world and to share. You see, faith without works is what? Dead, right? It's dead. We read that in James. Now, I'm not going to preach out of James, but you're going to see some similarities from the message. So join me. I'm going to be in uh, Amos chapter 5, reading 21 through 27 this morning. Uh, it, 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 let's, let's see what the Lord has to say. And this is through the voice of Amos. The voice of Amos. I hate, I despise your feast days, and I do not save your sacred assemblies. Though you offer me burnt offerings and your grain offerings, I will not accept them, nor will I regard your fattened peace offerings. Take away from me the noise of your song. For I will not hear the melody of your stringed instruments. But let justice run down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. Did you offer me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness 40 years, O house of Israel? You also carried Sycoth, your king, and Cherim, your idols, the star of your gods, which you made for yourselves. Therefore, I will send you into captivity beyond Damascus, says the Lord, whose name is the God of hosts. This is an interesting passage, especially if you have it just stand alone, if you don't understand context. And, and I think you hear me say this every week, context, context, context. There are certain passages that you can clearly understand by themselves, but context is so important for us to understand so we can understand what God is saying in a certain, certain circumstance. So let me talk to context here for just a few moments before we get into today's text. You see, the Israelites had been praising and looking forward to the day of the Lord. If you go just back a few verses, actually in the earlier verses in chapter 5, you would see that they were longing for the day of the Lord. But then Amos came on the scene and he he basically says, why? Why? Because they were looking for victory. They were looking for an earthly king. They were looking for things for themselves, key, key point, themselves, rather than 
what God's will was. They were not seeking the right things. And Amos basically tells them that you're going to be judged. And this day that would simulate or be light, if you will, of the Lord's coming would be dark for them, dark days, judgment days, days of wrath upon the Israelites because they too were sinners. You see, they were so righteous in everything that they were doing, so pompous in everything that they were doing, they were missing the mark. And so Amos says a couple words right before today's passage. He says, he gives them two comparisons. The first one is uh, a comparison is one who flees from a lion but runs right into a bear. And then the other one that flees into the house but get, gets bitten by a snake. And what Amos is saying, there is no way you can escape from God's judgment. Israel, hear these words. There's no way to escape from God's judgment whatsoever. And then we get to today's passage and we see this change in voice. He goes from more of a narrative to a first person message that we get to hear. And what I love about that is as we sit here in the year 2021, we get to hear the voice of a messenger speaking to us. Now, mind you, this particular moment, um, it, it is very apparent that Amos has come into the middle of a festival, a feast, perhaps even into the sanctuary to talk to the, the Israelites. I'm going to correct that term, temple, to talk to the Israelites. Now, I want you to place yourself in that mindset, right? Because we should long to hear from God in the way that he's speaking to us. And so visualize, if you will, for just a moment, as we're enjoying a time of worship this morning, We've had songs of praise, we've had prayer, we've sung hymns, we've enjoyed our time singing to the Lord. And what if that door popped open and a prophet walked in that door, interrupted the singing, interrupted me, interrupted whatever might be going on to bring a message from God? That's the setting that we're in right here in this moment as he comes in and he speaks in first person to anyone who would read his words. He's speaking to them and he's speaking to us. He interrupted this offering time when they were in the middle of the festival or the feast, and he talked about their burnt offerings, their sacrificial offerings. Now, what's fascinating is, as you think about this, he's not judging them for their religious activities. Let that sink in as we sit here in church. He's not judging them for their religious... They were very religious. Very religious. They did the right things. Yet they were being judged for what they didn't do. So let's dig in. Let's see, let's see what the Lord has to tell us in, in the words here. Verses 21 and 22. I hate and despise your feast, right? These are really strong words that Amos starts off with, right? Right? This word, I hate, is a very passionate word. I, I hate is such a, it invokes this, this feeling within you, really disliking something, but with passion. I hate this. I don't hear that word too often from many people. And to hear it in the Bible, it really draws attention. But then right behind it, I hate, I despise your feast days. And I do not save your, save your sacred assemblies. Amos is speaking for God. God has given this man words to speak to the Israelites. And he goes on to talk about the offerings in the very next verse. But it's not only the offerings, and we're going to see that in just a second, but it's also the feast, the entire festival, the entire time that they're gathered together. I hate these. I despise these what you're doing. Again, I want you to think about what if that happened right here, right now. As he goes on to talk about the burnt offerings and the grain offerings and, and, and the fat and peace offerings, we have to understand what these are and what they represent because there's similarities to what we do today. Right? The burnt offerings is when they would place the animal on the altar and they would burn it, creating this 
uh, smell, if you will. The whole intent was to give something to God for God to enjoy, like the, the aroma to, to move forth into the air, into God's nostrils, that it would be sweet, a sweet aroma. That was the burnt offerings. It was a gift from man to God for all that you've done. Second was the grain offerings. This truly was a gift to bring it forth and give to God. It symbolized giving back to God. And then the last one, the fattened peace offerings. This too is an animal that was placed on the, the, the altar, but there was a little bit of difference. You see, not only did you have the aroma moving forth, but you also participated by eating part of that animal. And what this represents is communion with God, a time sharing with God, relationship with God in the offering. We see all three, and he says, I won't accept them. I won't regard them whatsoever. Do away with your offerings that you're bringing forth to me. Strong, strong words. As we move on to verse 23, we see more. We see him, we, we, he, we see him reject the time of worship. You know, back then, the time of playing of the harp and string uh, uh, instruments, that was how they played music. It was to be sweet to his ear. It was a time of worship. Likewise, as we sing to the Lord, when we're here in the mornings and we're singing, we're not just repeating words, we're to be singing to the Lord. And the Lord says, away, take them away. I can't hear them. Can you imagine the pain of hearing that from the Lord? And it leaves you wondering, what did we do wrong? Why? And we get to verse 24 and we see the why. We, we get the reasoning here behind it. And you have to dig deep into this to understand these words. Let justice run like, run down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. You see, they were going through all the motions of religion. The motions of religion. They were bringing their offerings. They were having the festival and the feast. They were gathering together. They were singing. They were playing instruments. They were doing all this. But they didn't have a changed heart as they went out into the world. You know, God wants us to be changed people. We're not to assemble here on Sunday mornings, Wednesday nights, and Sunday nights, and then go out in the world to be different. We're to be changed people to care and share justice and righteousness with others. I wonder at times, do we really think about that? We come here and we hug on one another on a Sunday morning. We give. This church gives like never, none other church that I've ever seen. But what do we do when we leave this building? It makes me wonder. You see, he says, I want righteousness and justice to flow like a river. He says, like water, like a mighty stream. Now, to understand the translation, the interpretation here, as you look at stream, it, it gives us a symbol of something, right? The, the word here can be translated back to a small brook, something that you might find out in the woods, and I want you to go on a journey with me in the woods for just a second, because if you walk in any woods, you're probably going to find this a place where the mountains or the hills lead down to a path where you can see where, where it rains, water runs. And maybe sometimes there's water in it. Maybe sometimes you see a natural spring coming out of the ground. You see little trickles of water occasionally. But when it rains, it flows and it overwhelms. Sometimes it'll go beyond the boundaries of where it should. You see, that's what God is saying. Let justice run like the water. Righteousness like a mighty stream overflowing out into the world that we live in and that you live in, Israel, right? This message, this message is about social, social justice and righteousness that is shared with our neighbor, with our neighbor. The next couple of verses, and I'm going to dig a little deeper here in a minute but I want to get through the text. The next couple of verses 
are actually pretty difficult to, to, to deal with and to understand, right? Because if you look at it, it's a, it's a look back and a statement of judgment. A look back and a statement of judgment. He, he, he talks about being in the wilderness the 40 years. And he said, did you not bring me sacrifice in the wilderness? And you also carried your idols uh, and, and we could spend literally probably the rest of the day analyzing this, these three or four verses. But he, he's bringing back a time. There, the, being in the wilderness was not easy. Like they brought forth their offerings during that time. They were faithful. But it wasn't the offerings alone. It was their relationship that they had. You see, when they were walking through the wilderness, they kept right with the Lord. They kept right with one another. They were within one accord at all times. They moved along with the Lord. They followed the Lord. They went wherever the the Lord wanted them to go. And they helped their neighbor. They relied solely upon the Lord. And they brought forth offerings. But it was that relationship. There was times that they carried idols as well. And it mentions this. right? They carried idols. But they still had the relationship with the Lord. They kept forth this relationship with the Lord and with one another. That kept them in communion with God. But he says here, the, the closing verse, verse 27, he says, he talks about judgment. Therefore, I will send you into captivity beyond Damascus, says the Lord. Basically, the way I read this and I understand it is he's, he's saying, I brought you out of exile. I'm fixing to take you back in. That's a southern interpretation when I put in fixing, right? I'm fixing to put you back in. Strong words from the Lord. Written 2,800 years ago. And, and a lot of people, a lot of people in this world say, you don't need to worry about the Old Testament. It's old stuff. We're a New Testament church, Pastor Jeff. That's why I don't need to worry about the Old Testament. Wrong. Wrong. Right? How do we apply this? What do we, how do we look at this and understand what the Lord would have to say with this? So I want to do a quick comparison of the, the American church. I'm not going to say it's Salute a Baptist church. I'll, I'll let you figure out if it's us or not. Right? But if you look at the churches today and, and we think about how we worship when we're singing, right? When we're singing, I'll just call that one out. Do you sing to the Lord? Or do you read words? Which are we doing here in church in the mornings? And by the way, everything that I'm saying, I'm standing in a mirrored room. I'm looking at myself. Don't think I'm judging you. I'm not the one that judges. I look at myself and think about this. Am I just reading words? Or am I really singing to the Lord? Right? Am I really worshiping? There's an old phrase that I loved. My daughter was a dancer. And she, she did amazing things whenever she danced in competition. Things that I could never imagine. The beauty of the group as they danced. But she would practice And she would dance in the house like no one else was watching, right? Even though I was glaring and I was watching to see what she'd do. There's a phrase, dance like nobody else is watching. But there's a broader phrase with that, sing like nobody else is singing. Do you all know where that phrase came from? Sounds like it'd be a modern term, but it's actually Mark, Mark Twain. Mark Twain. Dance like nobody's watching, love like you've never been hurt. That's a tough one. Right? Love like you've never been hurt. Sing like nobody's listening. Do you do that Sunday mornings? I get nervous, by the way. I got to give you a visual. I sit right here, right? And I sing. Bill's watching me. That makes me a little bit nervous because he can read music. I cannot. And I sing. I do my best. But then the deacons walk up to take up the offering. And I, I go really low because I don't want them to hear me singing over their shoulders. Why would I do that? I'm singing to the Lord. He's the only one that matters. But do I do that? And then likewise, as we come to this time and we worship and enjoy this time with the Lord, 
on Sunday, do we carry that out on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday when there's Friday and Saturday? I know you'll pray with me here. Would you pray with me at the grocery store? I'm going to get a little deeper. I'm going to hurt the men. Would you pray with me at Mike's store? That's a very manly store, right? I get nervous walking to Mike's place. The hardware store, would you pray with me at the hardware store? Are we carrying what God gives us on Sunday morning out into this world? Would you pray with me in the parking lot at Chili's in front of everybody else? Do we carry it out into this world? Let's talk, now let's talk about our offerings. Now, I'm going to say real quick, Salute Baptist Church, gives like no other church I've ever seen. Y'all are very uh, uh, giving, a giving church. But, but here's a deep question. Do we sacrifice to the Lord? Do we give our 10% and say, done? Or do we sacrifice? And I'm not talking about just money. Money's the easy part, right? Time, talent. Do we give to the church? Do we give to God, not to the church? That's a tough one. What about our, our idols? We say, well, we're Christian. We don't have idols. Wrong. Right? I'll speak to myself for just a second. I like my house. I like my truck. I like my Harley. And I like my coffee. One certain brand of coffee. Kelly stirs it with her finger. I've said that many times. That makes it good. I like those things. Would I give it up? Right? Do I worship those more? When I was in seminary, I read about this man, and I've never been able to let go of this man and what he did. He figured out that he had too many idols in this world and too many things that he placed before God, and so he sold everything. And he kept two changes of clothes, one to wear, wear today and one for tomorrow. And when he wore tomorrow, he washed today. And he moved himself into a small flat. It was over in Europe. One bedroom. Everything else he gave to God. Everything. Everything else he gave to God. Do we focus our lives and our worship more on us or on God and what God calls us to do? What are we really doing with all that we're called to do? You know, it's interesting. I want to go back to the story for just a second. You know, if you look at the story as he calls out the Israelites, he doesn't say things like, get a bigger, better Bible, read more out loud, pray more out loud. You need to sing better. He doesn't say any of that. He didn't call them out for the worship, remember? They're very religious people. But he says, let justice, pull up 24 again for me, please. Let justice roll on like a river. Righteousness like never failing stream. He talks about social justice and righteousness. And I, again, I'm going to say, well, you might say, well, this is Old Testament. How can it possibly apply? It's 2,800 years ago that these words were said. We're better than that. Jesus never said this, did he? Matthew 25. I'm not going to ask you to turn there, but that's where he's calling out the sheep and the goats. Remember that one? Right? It's the saved and the unsaved, the believers and the non-believers. Do you remember what the criteria was? Did you do this to them? Because if you did, you did it to me. Or if you didn't, it was against me. You see, it's interesting because the criteria for judgment was not being in church. It was not giving in church. It was not the Bible. You know, you know do you have a King James or do you have a study Bible or whatever it may be? It was how did you treat others? That was the criteria for judgment. Because you have to understand, Matthew 25, those verses are not about just being nice to somebody else. 
It's about judgment. That's the criteria he was using. And so how do we apply this? How do we apply this? Is it about praying? Is it about preaching? Is it about teaching? Because we're really, really good at those things. But you know what? When we say that, who do we sound like? Pharisees. Yes, ma'am. Jesus didn't come for us to be like the Pharisees. He came so we could be like him. As he went out into the world, he did radical things, but he just loved on people. He just cared for people. He healed the sick, made the blind to see. He just hung out with people, sinners. He went to dinner with sinners. When's the last time you did that? Don't answer that. I don't know that I want to know right now. Because you might say it was with my spouse last night at dinner. I don't want to hear that, right? Love. You know, these are hard words that we hear, and we look at it, and we think, wow, those are some pretty harsh words. But what God is telling us is to love one another, love our neighbors, show the love of God. I want to close with, with a scripture. And I'm going to fast forward over to the New Testament, not Matthew, 20, uh, Matthew 25, but John chapter 13. Let these be the closing words for today. These are Jesus' words. Let Jesus speak to us. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Jesus is calling us to love our neighbor. You know, there's so many people that are hurting out in this world. And I want to tell you the best thing you can do for them. I, I love giving away Bibles. I've talked about that many times. But maybe the best way for you to break down walls and to share the love of Jesus Christ is just to love on them for a while to share love, to share a meal, to share water, whatever it may be. Most somebody's long. You know, and some of this is very timely and it wasn't planned, but we've got Serve Saluda coming up. That is one of the greatest weeks that we can have here in Saluda when we go out and we just love on people. We're going to have time during that week where we're going to be building a roof for somebody. We're going to be building a floor for somebody. And we're going to be doing yard work. And we're going to do whatever people ask us to do. And without a doubt, someone is going to ask that question. Why are you doing this? Because Jesus. Jesus loved me first. And I just want to love on you. Love your neighbor. Show the justice. Share righteousness. You know, I challenged the men yesterday as we go down this river. Maybe let this river be symbolic of what we should be doing with our lives. Right? God has blessed us with so much grace in our lives. But we need to let that flow to others. And that's exactly what the river does, is it flows out into the world. As I come to a close this morning, I would ask you with eyes closed and head bound, head, heads bowed, just let God's word speak to you this morning. I'm not judging anybody. I have no right nor, nor the, any ability to judge anybody. I judge myself. I look at what I do and what I don't do. I need God's mercy upon myself. This morning I would ask you, are you going through the motions of church? Or are you letting it permeate your body, permeate, permeate your soul, your heart, that you, you're a changed person and you share this love? You go out and make a difference in the world because of what God has done in your life. I can't judge that. That's between you and God. And this morning I would ask you to get right with God Get right with God. Ask him to reveal to you how you need to be, what changes need to occur in your life. This morning, I know there's folks in here that may not know Jesus as their Savior. Today is the perfect day for you to step forward and accept him 
as your Savior. Only takes a moment when you ask Him into your heart, when you confess Him as your Savior. Perhaps today the Lord's spoken to you in your heart and you're a changed person. I would invite you, invite you to come and pray with me this morning. I'd love to pray with you. Perhaps you've strayed. Perhaps you've been going through the motions as a believer. But you haven't taken that next step to serve others, to share the love of Jesus Christ with others. Perhaps this morning you just need to get on your knees and pray to the Lord. Ask him to reveal how you can serve him and serve others. To be changed. Be that change agent here in Saluda and even beyond Saluda. Perhaps you're visiting, you're looking for a church. We're a Bible preaching, Bible teaching church. That's all we know. We teach the entire Bible because the entire Bible is God's revealed word to us. Every word, every sentence, every word, every comma, every punctuation mark. I believe is God's word and it's given to us to reveal him to us and for us to take action into this world. I pray whatever your lot is in life this morning that you would seek the Lord and seek his will upon you. Thy will be done is our prayer and should always be our prayer each and every day. I pray this morning that you just get it right with God. Whatever that looks like in your life, just get it right with God. Father, I just pray for each and every person. I pray that you're working in hearts this morning. I pray that we indeed would be changed people as we exit this building this morning. Father, allow us to share the love, to be the stream, the flow of grace into this world, from Jesus into this world. Allow us to be the conduit. Allow us to be the stream. Allow us to be the river. However you would use us, Father, use us today. Father, I lift up all these prayers to my mighty God, my Lord, my Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please stand as we close? y'all so much for being here today I do appreciate you being here and, and, and I just pray, pray, pray that the Lord spoke to your heart this morning we do have Bible study tonight uh, family discipleship time 6pm, that's children, youth and adults the adults will be in here as we continue our study in the book of Ephesians I would uh, uh, invite you personally to come and enjoy that time together uh, also don't forget Wednesday nights we have many many things going on, I know in the past We've kind of shut down Wednesday nights on, on during the summertime, but we still have uh, time with the children and the youth and adults on Wednesday nights. So please be here. And as we exit this morning, be changed. Be the change agent out in this world. This world needs Jesus so bad. Let's just go out and show them Jesus in all that we do. Would you join me as we close? Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for your precious words. Father, sometimes those words are harsh and hard to hear, just like this morning. Father, but you bring them with love. You discipline us with love, and we thank you for that. And you ask us to share your love with those that are in the world. And Father, I pray that we're changed. I pray that we go out 
and share the love of Jesus Christ with as many as we can. Father, I pray for uh, safety. I pray for guidance. I pray that you would lead us throughout this week. And Father, I pray that you would return us again at the next appointed time. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.